Welcome to Libido Rosa. I'm your host Pinky and today we're going to be talking about Married at First Sight. So if you'd like to see more then just stay tuned but before we begin I would like for everyone to check out my website libidorosastyle.com where you can find cute accessories like the one I'm wearing right now these earrings. Also if you like my hair or if you like the hair in this picture make sure you click the link down below. I just posted some new wig reviews so you can watch that before or after this video like comment and subscribe and without further ado let's get into this video like honestly y'all this literally and i know we probably say this every single season but this season probably is the worst like as far as the matches go nobody is really having that much chemistry except for like brianna and vincent but everybody else is like they're not really gelling it's getting to be really toxic and a little scary for some people and I'm just like, what is going on here? It's dramatic enough, I feel like, when you pair two strangers together and tell them, okay, just go be married, go live. That's dramatic enough, but I feel like because these people were so mismatched, it's 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 out of this world drama. Like, I almost feel like somebody should step in for some of these people because it's getting to be a little bit too much, okay? But we'll get to that for once i'm just gonna go ahead and get Paige and chris out the way because not much happened with them and thank god i'm tired i'm so tired i'm so glad they didn't meet up this week thank you chris's brother and his wife came to visit and she hadn't told him everything so she was like giving him the rundown on everything that had happened and the sister was just like oh my goodness <laughs> like I, she was like so concerned for her just like you could see it all over her face and meanwhile, her brother was like, wow. <laughs> Whoa, wow. Like, for some reason, I feel like Paige has been, like, with men that were emotional roller coasters in the past and continued to stay with them. Like, the fact that she stayed with Chris this long, it just tells me this is not the first time she's done this with a man. And her brother just seems like he's so desensitized to it because... There's only so much you could tell somebody who's going to do what they want to do anyway, you know, that's going to stick in the, that's going to stay in the toxicity under the guise of it being ordained by God or being a ride or die or however they want to categorize it. It's being a doormat, you know, I'm saying it's, it's not having the, enough self-esteem to leave when someone is treating you bad. That's what it is. But it, it I, I also understand because I've been in a situation where I'm like, like, I, I, if I could snatch you out of that I would but this is a grown person they're gonna do what they want to do and they're just gonna complain about them this week and then the next week they're gonna be right back together and lovey-dovey so I totally understand why the brother was just like okay <laughs> Paige said she fell in love with the idea of marriage so much that she lost herself and I'm just like girl you think you were content with being a long-suffering wife and accepting a outside baby after only a week not even a week you was willing to accept that so clearly you are in love with the idea of having a man and being married basically the brother just said learn from this because god has better for you and you know all the things that you say to people you know when they're in that situation because i, I feel like everything was very generic because he knows the first little inkling that chris gives her that he wants her back she will go running so there's no point in getting emotionally invested. <laughs> so Chris met up with his mother. Now, was this his apartment? Was this his, like, where is he at? Cause it don't look like a male apartment. It had a like black leather couch, but then it had some furry pillows. It just, it didn't strike me as his apartment. It strike me as an apartment that he was using for the show. That's what it looked like to me. Do he live in Atlanta or do he live in Detroit or wherever he's from like where does where does he live because we never got to see his place so whenever they sat down he told his mother that you know he's breaking it off with Paige and that Paige is being very inconsistent not answering his phone calls yada yada the mother likes Paige and but she understands why she doesn't want to communicate with you outside of this show like duh 
you got too much going on. And the mama was not coddling him at that point. And so I could appreciate that. So let's talk about Jacob and Haley. We left off with them. They had a huge fight on their anniversary date. So when we come back, he's apologized already. And she says she's emotionally drained because, you know, they can't have a conversation without fighting, basically. And if they're going to continue to go through the motions, because I just feel like they just need to leave each other alone at this point. But they're going to continue to go through the motions. They need someone to help them communicate better and call out when the other person is not being honest or what maybe they don't even see what they're doing that is aggravating the situation because like for me Haley is not giving her all but she's pretending like she is and it's it's coming off as gaslighting I don't know if she doesn't realize she's not really giving that much um even later on in the episode Brianna says they both could be doing more and I totally agree um if you want to continue in this situation both of them need to be putting in more but Jacob needs to stop every time we turn around poking and prodding do you find me attractive what about this and you're trying to make it seem like it's a joke but there's always truth in a joke like whenever they were laying down in the bed he was like well do you want to cuddle you want to spoon you want to do this he said that was a joke you know you were dead serious you know you really wanted to cuddle her so don't turn around and say that was a joke you know I don't know the way you talk you don't have any sort of inflection in your voice that would even come across as humorous or even like a dry sarcasm because your voice is so monotone how am I supposed to know when you're joking and when you're not you should tell people when you're joking and when you're not because nobody would, would be able to understand your jokes the way you tell them because I still don't believe it was a joke you know what I'm saying but he very well could have he probably did think that was funny or something but it don't come off that way baby that's why I'm saying they need somebody to come in and point these things out they have this awkward dinner and I kind of was able to see Haley's perspective better because she was sitting there asking him all the questions and he was giving her very you know he would talk about something that he had to talk about like well tell me about your exes and how weird they were that's something you can go into detail about but when she was asking him other things he was giving one word answers being really dry and then she's like well ask me some stuff like why am I sitting up here interviewing you and he just didn't even he didn't even put in any type of effort so I could totally understand how she could be like really irritated with him and over him at this point because you're you're not putting in any effort Jacob you just want her to come in and just be all over you and be in love with you and you're not even giving her anything you're not giving her anything it's giving nothing Jacob nothing like you have to give her something to work with you don't so see it's a cycle she's not giving anything because you're not giving anything and you're you don't want to cuddle up and be romantic with her and she's being cold towards you but it's because you're not giving anything but it's because you're not you know you see how it's a you see how it's an endless cycle of 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 of, of you did this so i'ma do this and you do this so i'ma do just leave each other alone, please, because I can't take it. I'm just tired. So let's move on to Br Brinson and Viana. I said, Br I was going to say Brinson and Viana. What? <laughs> Where is my mind right now? <laughs> what in the dyslexia? Let's talk about Vincent and Brianna, okay? I think I'm flustered by what I'm about to talk about. So they talk about their anniversary date. And he asked, what does she plan to do for him in return? And I'm just like, no, you should not do that. <laughs> um, now, maybe I'm wrong. You know, I, you know, I'm not married, but I just don't think that you should keep a running tally. Oh, I did this and this and this for you what are you going to do in return? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's one thing for you to be like, okay, I do all this stuff for this person and this person does nothing in return for me. But for you to be like, oh, I did something extravagant and nice. So now you need to do something extra. No, 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 no. That is not how that works. So that threw me off from the very beginning. Like, why are you asking her to do something in return? Like, did you do it so that you could get something in return? So then he goes on to list, I mean, every single thing from Disney World to laser tag to this, the aquarium, this, 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 
all this stuff that he wants her to do for him she, and she was looking at him like you want me to do all of this for you you want me to spend my money to do all of this for you and he was like yeah I mean she was basically like well who's gonna sponsor this because <laughs> uh no sir like y'all was he dead serious like I was waiting on the joke to come up because he was just listing stuff and stuff and stuff oh yeah I want to do this oh yeah and she was just sitting there like like you did do like a nice little boat date but you know how expensive Disney World is are you crazy and how all of that stuff on that list will add up and be like a fortune are you gonna do anything for her on that list like it's one thing if y'all sitting there talking about oh okay this is all the things we want to do together eventually but no you want her to do it for you Vincent please tell me that was a joke even if you wasn't joking lie and say that was a joke because you sound crazy the last day she planned for you you was ungrateful and you started pouting okay that would make me not want to do nothing else for you because I don't know if you're gonna flip out I done wasted my money you know what I'm saying it's not giving what it was supposed to give and the craziest part is production probably most likely paid for that anniversary boat date so yeah that was just really weird I didn't understand what that was about um and then they went bike riding and um they raced and I was like Lord Brianna please let him win child for he be out on the, on the ground crying but you know it didn't turn out that way they ended up having a great day riding the bike together and um I mean it was cute but that first part threw me off y'all like <laughs> that's why I'm like why is everybody losing their mind this episode what is going on let's go ahead and get into Ryan and Clara child Ryan this hair gotta go now I, I I don't talk about your hair as much as everybody else do in the comments pretty much every time I talk to my cousin about <laughs> Ryan she always bring up his hair but when I got to see an aerial view I was like oh no this hair gotta go <laughs> they don't even look right they don't even look right Ryan like why do you buzz cut it and then perm it like it's so thin it's so thin it literally looks like feeling Lil <laughs> they were babies please stop doing this calm over so claire comes up with the activity of doing couples yoga pretty much this is a staple for this show at this point anytime a couple is not getting down they do couples yoga so they can get more intimate and um it almost never works so i don't know why <laughs> i don't know why they keep continuing to do to do this like this will pressure the the other person to want to move forward it almost never works so they were doing these poses and he was very stiff and controlled the whole time as usual he he just i mean just just old man about it um and therefore he wasn't open to seeing how it would bring a connection and so i think that's why it doesn't work a lot of times because the person that doesn't want to um get closer or is afraid or whatever's holding them back they don't want to feel like forced into it and so i feel like their guard is automatically up when they participate in something like this like if they were more open and vulnerable it probably could help at this point clara is so frustrated because it's like she's exhausting everything that she could think of to try to help their relationship move forward and he's not budging but then the next thing we see he's he's going all out trying to build a relationship with their with her dog like he's willing to go to classes and he, he's like really making a big deal, a big effort with wanting to connect with the dog. It's like, so why are you not going all out to do this with your wife? You'll do that with the dog, but you won't do that with your own wife. It was, y'all, that was so odd to me. Like that was so odd. He literally gives her nothing, but he's willing to sacrifice time and effort to connect with the dog I maybe I'm not a dog you know maybe I'm just not a pet person but they don't make no sense to me so then when Ryan goes to meet with the other men and they're talking about relationships and you know Jacob is talking about how he's having a hard time with Haley he has the nerve to feel like he's a special snowflake and like he's doing so well with his relationship that he gonna give out advice you know what I'm saying he he out here preaching and, and 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 really acting like he's imparting some wisdom 
Like this is where his 82 year old man self comes out because he really thought he was schooling somebody on how to be in a relationship. Like he said, they are doing better than 99% of the people on the show. See, this is where I knew he was really, really delusional. And the delusion is mainly on his end. Because remember, I've been saying this whole time since the beginning, they are delusional. But no, I think it's Ryan that's delusional and trying to make Clara buy into his delusion. Because are you like, how do you really do you really think that he really believes that? How do you think that? And your wife is sitting here telling you she's very un. Well, I don't think. See, I think that's a part of the problem too. Clara holds back. Clearly, she's not just holding back on camera. I thought it was just for the camera, but I think she's holding back to him as well because for him to be this delusional, she can't be like being a hundred percent honest with how much this is bothering her. She she can't possibly because he thinks that they're like on like the right track and they're not they're not even on the same page for something that means so much to Clara you know what I'm saying so I mean she has told him but I don't think she's made it I don't think she's told him how serious it was or maybe he's not grasping it they are not on the same page at all and I can't believe he said that um your wife is completely unsatisfied and you refuse to open yourself up to to her and he talks about trust and trust is sexy and they have a shirt that says that and i guess he's gonna put it on when he feels like he trusts her fully and you know he said trust is built through consideration for each other i mean he went on this long rant of what he thinks trust is and trust and trust i guess he was on a high from when he was talking to jacob so now he gonna go come over here and preach to his wife and when i tell you she was so, so zoned out she was so like disconnected she was so like she was not even there she was not listening to him whatsoever and he could not even see that like she's like literally on top of him not paying attention to him at all and he couldn't even feel it that's why i said something is off with his perception because or maybe you just don't care about her perception i don't know because it seemed like you real selfish to me but we let's go ahead and talk about it. she puts on a good face on camera but when they thought them cameras was off okay they was up at Haley's house all right because she has respect for her husband, she would never say this kind of stuff on camera. But clearly they didn't know or they didn't realize that there are security cameras and, and microphones in the wild child. And um, that picked up on everything y'all said when y'all thought the cameras was gone. I kind of feel bad, but at the same time, girl, y'all know y'all on a TV show. They gave y'all these apartments. This ain't your apartment. When Clara said that they're doing everything but I'm thinking in my mind, it's a, it's like a mutual thing. Like it's mutual. <laughs> I will leave it at that. I, I thought it was a mutual decision. I thought it was a mutual understanding. I thought it was, they were mutually agreed to, you know, do everything but, but clearly it's one sided and she is the one giving and he is the one taking and he don't see nothing wrong with this i had no idea it was one-sided clara how come you ain't been saying that that's a big 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 important piece that you've been leaving out what girl you should have told dr viviana that and let me tell you this that's when i would be giving an ultimatum there's absolutely no way I would be the only one participating. Okay? Are you crazy? How selfish are you, Ryan, that you would actually subject your wife to that? Like, what are you talking about that you don't want to go all the way? Of course you don't, because you're the only one that matters in this relationship. Clearly, your needs are the only ones that matter clearly in this relationship. How dare you be so selfish? And I'm gonna have to give some to Clara too. Clara, why are you participating in this? There ain't no way. Are you crazy? What do I look like? You ain't get like you ain't getting 
nothing out of the situation. Why? I would have been blew up his spot. Are you crazy? People wouldn't be looking at me um, because we were already, you know, I was kind of, you know, iffy about it. I was like, okay, well, there's been women on this show who, you know, have held out. So I'm not going to judge Ryan too harshly. But child, is is this one sided? No, 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 no. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I would have left. I'd be ready to go. I would say, look, if, at least return the favor. At least return the favor. That is trash. Like, I, I, y'all, I, I was completely shocked. I could not believe that. I did not know that's, that's how that was going down. I did not know. I would have had a completely different opinion. Leave him. Leave him. He's too selfish. He is too selfish for him to be, for him to be acting the way he do and to have you doing what you doing and he still not stepping up. Uh, uh, mm -mm. leave him, leave him, leave, say no on decision day, girl. Child, let me calm down. Cause, cause that got my blood pressure up. And now I'm about to talk about some other people that's going to really get it up. Let me, let me calm down. So let's move on to Virginia and Eric. Like I have things written down and I hope it comes out clear to y'all, but their situation is just so mind boggling to me in, in certain ways. It's so toxic, but let me, let me try to get through this. I'm just going to read my notes. Just know Virginia was basically crying this entire episode and I felt so bad for her. So what I noticed from Eric is that he seems to needle her and I can't tell if it's on purpose or not. Like he keeps poking and poking and bringing stuff up and poking and poking. And I don't know if he's purposefully trying to break her down or if it's just subconscious. He's like one of those people that's very um, insecure. So he constantly has to bring things up because, you know, until it makes him feel better uh, by her like giving in. I don't know, but he constantly does this. This is a, this is a recurring thing. He keeps pushing the issue and pushing the issue and it's like really driving Virginia crazy. What we see first is that um, they have like different parenting styles, if you will, when it comes to their dogs. He thinks her dog needs military training, basically. <laughs> Cause I'm like, why would he mention the military when he's talking about training a dog? So I don't think he's wrong, right? I do think the dog, needs training okay if the dog's jumping up on people and and biting people whether he's really biting them or not you do need to train your dog because i if i come up in your house and your dog jump up on me i'm not staying long okay i don't like that i'm not a dog person side note dog people can y'all realize everybody is not dog people i don't like when dogs jump up on me at all i really don't like for anybody to be in my space and that includes animals all right especially not licking and especially not biting so yes virginia your dog does need training but it's the way that he frames it she's being defensive because he constantly is trying to control or change something about her he makes it seem like his way of doing things is superior to hers when that is not the case every single time and then when he brings something up and it's not going his way he threatens in the relationship he gives an ultimatum and this is not healthy this is not healthy that every time we get in an argument well if you want to leave just leave or you don't have to deal with it no that is that is a form of manipulation that's manipulation right there and i hope you know it sir um because you know you don't you know you don't really want her to leave and you know you don't really want to leave so that should not even be on the table but you use it to try to manipulate her into doing what you want her to do so she gets so upset that she storms out and like she's going off to on the producers about how they had a huge argument last night it didn't make sense why this argument that seemed small would blow up to this point so it makes sense that that they had already been arguing um and he likes to look perfect on camera they think they're arguing off camera but the security cam fo footage is the footage is okay the footage is catching y'all y'all don't even realize it I feel like that's another way of kind of like trying to control the situation, control the narrative. And Virginia is tired of it. She's tired of pretending like they're in a good place when they're not. Virginia is one of those people, she can only be who she is. She don't know how to fake the funk. She got she to gotta say what's on her mind. She got to tell you how she feels because when she hold back too much, it drives her crazy. So when we see the security cam footage, apparently they went out together and then she disappeared for 40 minutes. This is his side of the story. She disappeared for 40 minutes. He didn't know where she was. 
and um, he was worried. And so that made him get mad at her because he was concerned. And he was like, "What? Well, you were gone for 40 minutes. And I can show you. I can show you. And I'm just like, well, how can you show her? And it, 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 it made me think, like, I hope you ain't got nothing on her phone tracking her or nothing like that. Because how can you show her? Like, because she said he never texted or called her. Her side of the story is um, she went to the bathroom, then she went to the bar or whatever. And so they got away from each other. It just it just took her a little time to get back to him. That's her side of the story. She said he never called a text, so she didn't even know he was upset. And then she told him he comes off as controlling and he says he's just protective. And I could understand you wanting to, you know, know where she is, but for you to get this angry and upset, she says that every time that he drinks, he gets mad at her. And I think that's when he lets his frustration out is when he drinks because he's, like I said, she lets it all hang out, but he holds it in. So I think the little things that bother him about her, which is a lot because he wants to change her. Like it was so many things he wants to change about her. So these things pile up and pile up. And I think he explodes and just lets it all out when he's drunk when he's had a problem from the beginning you know what i'm saying he claims she doesn't realize she's married but he doesn't even want to talk about their issues causing these big blow-ups and that's childish like yeah i do think there are some things that um virginia has a childish mindset on but you also have a ch childish mindset by not wanting to talk out your issues that is one thing you, you you have to do in marriage you know and then when you don't get your way if you don't like it you can get out these ultimatums trying to kick her out why do you think she don't want to live with you because every time y'all argue you you gonna want to kick her out it's your house and then he invalidates her feelings by saying well how long do you want to be mad like just basically just get over it he's not willing to compromise whatsoever when that didn't work he plays the victim oh i always get hurt i wonder why i wonder why i'm sorry he needs serious serious help he do I also think Virginia needs help. And I love the fact that later on in the episode when she's talking to um, Brianna and Paige, she says she's going to get a therapist. I'm so happy to hear that because she seems to have like severe anxiety. And I think this um, marriage is only aggravating that. Um, but I think that he needs to go as well individually. But he needs his own individual therapist. And um, he needs to deal with his controlling, manipulative and gaslighting ways. And so basically he's doing all that and she's literally on the verge of a panic attack. I know what that looks like because I've been there. Okay. She's literally, I mean, I, I felt it. She might've been having a panic attack. It might've been just a mild one, but she was just like, <sighs> and, and he was trying to touch her. She's like, no, don't touch me. And I felt so bad for her because he wasn't, he wasn't helping her in any way. He was aggravating her. He was aggravating her and I'm just like, oh no, she need to get away from him for real. She says she feels isolated from her family and she feels like she's the only one making changes because he's the only one asking for like this much change and he doesn't feel like he has to compromise. I mean, this whole thing, it was so scary to watch. I just felt like she was right on the edge and he was pushing her. It was like... Ugh. For real, like it just y'all, that was scary. And I feel like somebody should have came in and intervened. For real. Like I know producers are probably not supposed to step in. I know, you know, the experts are not there at that moment, but I really, really, really feel like somebody should have intervened because that was a very, very scary moment. And you don't know where somebody's mind can go during a situation like that. So later on, um, when they talk about it. I felt bad for her once again because she took all the blame for being anxiety driven. I do feel like she does need to learn some coping skills for dealing with anxiety, but he also was exacerbating the situation and he needs to take responsibility for that. You know what I'm saying? He'll never acknowledge his wrongdoing. She always has to be the one to come back and apologize. So here he goes, bring up the dog's training. Here he goes, pushing, pushing the issue, even though they're trying to like, make up and, and talk about you know I feel like the discussion should have been her anxiety and how he could you know help in the situation instead of 
aggravating the situation but no he brings up something that is even more aggravating you know something this is bothering you know this is something that irks her every time y'all talk about it so why are you bringing up bringing this up now when she's talking about the fact that she has anxiety issues why would you bring this up now the worst possible time you could I feel like at this point she's like shut down and so she's protecting her emotions by not really talking to him about this situation she's basically like anytime the dog does something she talking about what the dog's doing she's like she shut off she he, he can't break into that right now because I feel like mentally whether subconsciously or not she's protecting herself because she doesn't want to get to where she was the other day so he just starts a big argument he places all the blame on her not his constant nagging and thinks that she needs to step up and of course he threatened to leave here we go again so y'all after that like whenever they were quote unquote making up i was not paying attention i completely zoned out at that point because um i feel like this is now a toxic relationship for real like this is team too much for real like unless y'all gonna bring in the experts to help them facilitate these conversations it's this is uh, it's just too much this is unhealthy too much I can't take it I can't take it my nerves was on edge watching it um I'm praying for Virginia for real hopefully she's not still with him so y'all let me know how, what y'all felt about this episode down below do you agree with me do you not agree with me I would love to hear your opinion and I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in my next one peace <laughs>